Columbia Gorge wine region, the, the area that we focused um, that I'll talk about a little bit more in a minute, is a new wine region. We really didn't know much about their story or how many vineyards or wineries there was in this region. So it's been fun to go uh, back to the region and, and kind of uh, share these results that we have. So uh, just a little bit of background for you to start out with. Here we are at Winfield College. You can have my little map here. Uh, the Columbia Gorge wine region is about 45 minutes east of Portland um, along the Columbia River. And it includes two AVAs, uh, the Columbia Gorge AVA, which is highlighted in yellow, and the Columbia Valley AVA, which is highlighted in this burnt orange color. And we decided to include um, all, both regions, you know, to get the uh, extended region of the, the gorge. And so I have this photo right here on Underwood Mountain. A lot of our photos between my presentation and Scott's you'll see overlap. Um, this is looking down to the Columbia River. We're looking east at a White Salmon, the Dalles, and Hood River. So for those of you that aren't familiar with um, this area, you have a very, you know, deep cut gorge by the Columbia River, um, separated by, you know, hills and valleys um, in between. And I to show both uh, photos up here, both this is the um, western portion on Underwood Mountain, uh, all the way over east at Cascade Cliffs Vineyard, which you can already see in the photos that I have here and many other to share. There's a, just a difference in the vegetation um, that we, we have in this very small region. And you can see that even on my, my Google Maps image that I'm showing. You can see the green on the um, western side and then all the way out east it just changes significantly um, out to the eastern edges. Um, so again, this is something the vintners are very much aware of in this region, right? This, this diversity in climate, this, this rain shadow that you have of the Cascades. Um, and so what we were interested to know is, you know, where are these vineyards um, in this region? Uh, where, you know, what are the conditions, general conditions at these vineyard sites that they are growing on and then also, um, you know, kind of putting that all together to define a general sense of the terroir of this, of this region. So how we did this was uh, we first contacted the Columbia Gorge Wine Association and reached out to vintners in the area and um, started a survey. Um, and so this was both um, by emails and uh, phone calls. We visited the vineyard sites and got not only the locations, pictures, interviewed the, the vintners on grape varieties and acreage estimations, um, and then just kind of general background information of um, how they are managing each site. And so these are some of the photos of uh, some of the vintners, uh, just very passionate, welcoming people uh, in the region that we were able to uh, connect with. Uh, again, Scott highlighted this uh, wonderfully in the beginning too. We were focusing more on the physical uh, factors of the terroir to define this region. So these, especially the first five, are the ones that I will be highlighting today um, and that we were focusing on for my thesis work up in the gorge. And this is a wonderful picture at uh, Domaine Puyon uh, Vineyard taken in Lyle. You can really get a sense of right, the, the climate, the vines, and the soil all incorporated, what we were focusing on. And so uh, how we did this is we once we had the vineyard locations, we had the GPS locations, we would extract uh, different uh, physical information from existing databases. And so the grape varieties were taken from the survey that we had, including all the variety names. The soils we collected, which you've been seeing throughout uh, Kat's work and Scott's, focusing mainly on the soil ser series to d differ between the different soils that we have in our region. Uh, geology, we focused on the most recent uh, geological maps for our region, and then we also pu pulled um, the soil survey maps to better understand the influence of LUS in uh, the Columbia Gorge. Uh, the topography, we focused on um, the elevation maps, the DEMs, and then the climate was actually a huge help by uh, Greg Jones um, in providing us with the PRISM data set um, to really decipher between uh, rainfall, average growing, uh, growing season temperatures, and growing degree days. So again, once I had the GPS locations, we uh, went into ArcGIS, uh, mapped out the actual vineyards um, to get the acreage. Um, this photo shows, you know, the importance of doing the site visits, right? You can see um, the new planting fields is a little bit hard to see in um, the maps that we had available. Uh, but going to the site, we knew that this was a new vineyard. Um, yes, and then, so again, just a little bit more backgrounds. Uh, I'll kind of blow through these 
since uh, Scott highlighted them as well, we have uh, Greg Jones' work is what we used for accumulation, heat accumulation, looking at the average growing season temperatures, and this was correlated to different uh, wine regions here in, in Pacific Northwest are the ones that I highlight, highlighted. And then um, those growing season temperatures can then be correlated to the um, different varieties that tend to grow in those. So, um, and then again, yeah, heat accumulation, uh, was also something that we wanted to include because this is commonly used more by the vintners and we wanted to provide that information for them. So uh, some of our work, again, not only going through and um, finding the vineyards through the grower survey, collecting the information through um, the existing databases, but then we also went out to the field, to the vineyard sites, and looked at the soil um, to better get a sense of how it varies in the region. And so what we found is that there were uh, 37 uh, wineries, this is as of 2013 when we started this work, 82 vineyards uh, totaling to 15, 513 hectares, uh, over 1,200 acres in the Columbia Gorge. The Columbia Gorge AVA, we split it up, um, 55 vineyards in the Columbia Gorge, uh, 24 in this portion of the Columbia Valley, which is just in the gorge. Uh, one kind of on the border, or two on the border, excuse me, one outside of the both ADAs. And the size of each vineyard ranged from, you know, half an acre to almost 300 acres in size. As far as the topography varies, um, there was a, a pretty big difference you can see, much higher than even the Willamette Valley vineyards we had, ranging from 29 meters to almost um, 550 uh, meters in elevation. So there was this really large you know, difference between those close to the vineyard and then higher up, especially on Underwood Mountain, as you'll see. A majority of the vineyards were flat, as I've shown in this picture taken by Scott Burns at uh, Gunkel Vineyards. And a majority of the vineyards as well were, were south facing in the, in the Columbia Gorge. So this map is showing, uh, again, what we were trying to look for, these boundaries and this change of climate. We knew that it varied, but we wanted to know where those, those uh, temperatures really vary between. And so you can see coming from um, west to east just how different it, it, it really is. And the warmth tends to stay close as we expected to the Columbia Gorge, um, really beginning here in Dowsport area. Um, Mosier and Lyle is just in this region too. Um, the majority of the vineyards in this, in this region are within the intermediate uh, climate regime um, for average growing se uh, season temperatures. And so looking at growing degrees, we actually had a similar uh, finding in the maps where you have this transitional boundary kind of right here in the Mosier Lyle into your warm climate um, regime and your cool climates in Underwood and uh, Hood River. And again, majority are within that kind of the intermediate for growing season uh, temperatures that region 1B for growing degree days. And again, just taking it uh, back to the work by Greg Jones and taking our um, average growing season temperatures, we kind of fall, you can see that range between the minimum and maximum uh, temperatures within this very uh, small area, uh, able to have a, a lot of different varieties grown in a, a very short area is what we found. So from the grower survey, what we found is that there was a, a total of 41 different varieties that were grown within um, the Columbia Gorge, um, and, and majority, I mean, were really these 21 varieties. So what that was telling us is that being a very young wine region, it was within the last decade or so that it's actually doubled in size in terms of uh, vineyards, there's a lot of vintners that are still experimenting with different varieties. Um, and so majority of the, the, the great varieties that are grown are Pinot Noir, um, coming down to more cool climates, and then we have our Syrahs, Merlots, and Zinfandels. And so, Again, seeing that difference in climate, we wanted to see how those varieties differed between. And so we split it up amongst the Columbia Gorge AVA and Columbia Valley AVA. And, and for the most part, it was what we expected, being cooler climate varieties in the Columbia Gorge and warmer uh, varieties in the Columbia Valley. But one little surprise was that Pinot Noir. Uh, for Scott and I, were kind of looking at that. And there is this one, and you can see there's only five vineyards or so in the Columbia Valley that do have Pinot Noir. One of those vineyards, though, is our largest vineyard that is planted in the Columbia Gorge. It's about 300 acres or so. Um, and the reasons for that is they like to blend the more jammy, as they described it, um, Pinot Noirs grown on the, the warmer climates with the um, lighter varieties, as he described Pinot Noir of the Willamette Valley. So as far as the uh, different geological deposits, there's a range of this as we see in the Columbia Gorge. Uh, we have predominantly less um, basalts, Missoula flood deposits, which is a huge part of the story in the gorge, all the way down to Lahars and more superficial deposits, basalts, 
um, as you can see here. We're looking just purely at the soils, what we were finding as we were going through is that there was clustering of different soil series in different regions of the Columbia Gorge. And so by looking at majority, you know, trying to look at which ones have majority of those soil series, we were able to come up with um, seven different soil subregions based purely off of the soil series. And so what I'm gonna do is just kind of walk you through a little bit of the climate and soils that we're finding in each of those regions. Uh, again, this is showing just the locations of those soil pits that we went through and, and tried to uh, look at the differences. So I'll, I'll start out with uh, Underwood Mountain here on our east, our uh, western end, one of our highest uh, vineyards um, and elevations in this, in this region. Again, we're still in that very cool climate region. You can see even the vegetation, the forest, um, even looking out at some Mount Hood close to the Cascades. And we do have our piezolites that Kat highlighted um, in the Columbia Gorge, very excited to see those. This is volcanic derived soils, um, uh, basalts, very young um, boring lavas on Underwood Mountain. You can see that very red color though, very well drained on Underwood Mountain. Similar thing in Hood River where we have those red soils, those very well drained soils. Um, Hood River had predominantly two, uh, two dominant soil series, the Oak Grove series and the Rockford series. The Oak Grove uh, was a little hard deposits, so again, more of that volcanic influence in Hood River. Um, and then before, below certain elevations, we had these very, it might be a little hard to tell, you can see some of the gravels here. Um, this Missoula flood influence, where Missoula flood waters actually came into Hood River um, and deposited there. Again, Hood River, we're still kind of in that fairly, uh, cool to intermediate um, climate range. And then we transition into Lyle, where we're coming into this transitional zone, getting into a little bit more warmer climates. Uh, you can see this in the picture that I have as well. We're kind of getting out of more of the forest vegetation. Uh, what we see here in Lyle, and similar to Mosher as well, is these difference between the upper elevated um, soils and the lower elevated, right? So the upper elevated were very fine grain, um, less derived, very, um, uh, non-skeletal, where you get down below, ooh, what did I do? Oh, there we go, okay. Now we get below those elevations and you get into uh, very gravelly soils, mainly influenced by the Missoula floods. And we see this as well in Dowsport. Now we're moving into the very warm climates, right? You can see the vegetation change here. It was a similar progression of above, above Missoula flood elevations, you get this uh, fine grain deposits, um, and then you come down below and you get very sandy rich and uh, skeletal gravelly rich soils. Mary Hill, we're now out in our easternmost uh, location out here in the Columbia Gorge. Again, very dry location. This is a picture of one of the largest vineyards that we have that I, I mentioned before, the new planting of it. You see those basalt columns out here in the, um, the eastern ends of it, and the, the soils here are very um, light in color and less, uh, less derived predominantly. So again, you know, you can't really talk about the gorge without those Missoula flood and the influence on those soils. And so we were seeing this progression that I, I showed you just now, where you see this difference in texture at higher elevations and lower. And so what we did is we went back through and said, okay, let's look at what those, those elevations have been projected and shown and try and map that here to see if we're, we're seeing that correlation. And sure enough, we were. We were seeing that the, the, the soils that did have the skeletal textures, um, very cobbly rich, were below those elevations that have been projected throughout the gorge. And so as much as um, the climate is a huge role in the, telling the story of the terroir of the Columbia Gorge, the Missoula floods as well is, is an important part of the story. And so this is just a kind of a general geomorphic model of what we're seeing as far as the, the influence on textures of the soils in the Columbia Gorge, mainly due to those Missoula floods, right? Above the Missoula floods, we have those young lavas, lahars, less deposits. Below that, we have very skeletal, um, coarse, uh, sandy soils. Uh, closer to below. So I, I don't have a song. I also love this, but unfortunately you're gonna have to just bear with me through my uh, conclusions page. Um, so just, you know, kind of summing up what I talked about before, we have uh, 82 vineyards and uh, 37 different wineries with 41 different varieties in the gorge. Um, and it's growing. I mean, this region is just um, fairly new, but there's uh, just a lot of potential for different um, areas to, to plant grapes in this region. Uh, predominantly Pinot Noir, Syrah, Chardonnay tend to dominate um, and again, we have what we expected, the cool varieties in the west um, going out more east. You get those warm varieties similar to the Columbia Valley. Uh, those soil series, we had a variety of just different, different uh, soil series within this very small area. 
Um, but again, all were very well drained in, within that xeric moisture regime, which is um, key for the growing grapes. We did uh, kind of introduce, you know, maybe splitting those uh, AVAs into sub-AVAs based off of soil series. I'd be interested to see more work into the Columbia Gorge to see just the diversity, again, in soils, um, even just beyond just the texture alone. Uh, we did have a variety of just different climatic groupings, as you saw, our different Winkler in index and three uh, growing uh, season temperature range regimes. Uh, again, intermediate really predominate, or, you know, was dominant, but you did just have such a wide variety in the climate in this small area. Uh, Missoula floods is a huge role in the texture, and um, one one uh, other work, you know, factor that we, we would like to see kind of out of this work is really looking at the wind. That's such a area of the wind tunnel of the Columbia Gorge, and seeing how that kind of affects the grapes in this region. And that's it. This is a special thanks to all of the, uh, you can see the many grad students that helped, especially with digging soil pits, uh, Scott, and then also Greg Jones and being so generous and sharing uh, information for this project. Thank you.